Hi, my name is Laura Fremont with an exclusive interview for Dance Plug with the Akram Khan Dance Company. I'm on UCLA campus today chatting with Farooq Chaudhry. Hi, Farooq. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Farooq, would you please tell us your position in the company and what the company is doing here in Los Angeles? Yeah, well, you know, I've kind of, uh, I've adopted this title of producer uh -huh. and, and I've tried for years to figure out what that really means. And, and, and the simplest way of describing it is that I have one eye on the art and one eye on the money. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. That's, it. That's important person. <laughs> and the company is performing a vertical road yeah. at UCLA yes. this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a long road, in fact, vertical road. It, uh, actually, today, it's October the 5th, was two, exactly two years ago when we had the London premiere of the work, okay. which was the official world premiere in 2010. And it's, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a dark work, but it has hope at the end of it. And I think the, it really explores, without getting too pretentious, the notion of spirituality according to what that means to Akram. Tell me your positions in the company. Me, I'm, I'm a dancer and I'm also a rehearsal director for this piece, so it's, I have a double role. How many dancers do you get to work with? Eight, including me. Okay, do they listen to you? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's hard, you know, like, because uh, the, the position, like when you are dancer and the rehearsal director, sometimes the, the boundaries or the line is not really defined. Right. So sometimes I feel like they're taking me more as a, as a dancer and when I step out, there is not such a, so I have to really, it takes a bit of a time sure. to start to understand like, okay, now he's a work, so now he's outside, so we have to be more, more right. in, to listen to him or whatever. I joined the company in February 2012. I'm oh. the, one of the dancers. Yeah, you're brand new. You're uh, well, we have two new members will be premiering tonight. Oh, okay. Um, newer, so newer. I'm not so new now. Okay, yeah. so you're no longer the I'm baby of the family. The middle child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Tell me about the process before its first oh. performance. How okay. long did that um, take? Well, actually, every process between Akram and myself since we started the company 12 years ago has started in some kind of silly conversation, usually in airport lounges when we're Perfect. touring. You know? yeah, okay. And so we, we sit there and we get excited by something. And I remember we had this conversation about this idea of having like eight angels from different cultures okay. perched up somewhere in the heavens, like looking that. down on earth and thinking about it and reflecting on it and thinking about what do we mean to this? What do we mean to those people down there? Mm -hmm. what, you know, and, and in a sense, that's where this vertical row began. Oh, okay. um, and from that kind of silly conversation, we then decided we were going to be serious and okay. start thinking about people we'd love to work with. And, and then Nitin Sawney, who's the composer for Vertical Road and right. someone we worked with many times over the last 12 years, um, we invited him, him in. Right. And we found a dramaturg called Ruth Little and uh, okay. a lighting designer. And we just kind of had several meetings where we just discussed this theme of spirituality and these angels. And it, and eventually kind of creates itself in a sense. You know, uh, we, we didn't go away and decide we wanted certain movements and then we find the music to it. Everything gets planted in the ground simultaneously. That's awesome. And yeah. it grows in one kind of tree. So Farouk found you. And after I, when I moved to London, right. I got a job in London and I, uh, there was an uh, other guy who I was working with and he was coming there, uh, Farouk and Akram was coming there as a mentors before the oh, premiere. Right. So he gave just a few so information and the help. So Farouk came Perfect. and he said to Akram, like, I, this guy works. Yeah, yeah I think like I have it. a dancer for you. Cool. How about you, Shadi? I was working with a choreographer called Gregory McComa. Uh -huh. He's a South African choreographer. Okay, but great. he was also mentored by Akram. Um, okay. So I, I started to perform in his piece and Akram came to watch the piece. It. And so did Andre <laughs> come to watch the piece. Like, yeah, let's take this chick. Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> oh, you had something to say. <laughs> Akram works with Nitin a lot. Yeah. So they had the wonderful opportunity to, to really collaborate. Sure. How does that process exactly work, though? I mean... Do they go away and think and come together and put their material together? Or do they think together in the same room, think tank it? I think or? they do all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, what, I mean, what they certainly don't do is Nitin goes away and writes some music and says, here you go, Akram, now make the dance. Or he makes the dance and brings Nitin and says, now make some music to this. Okay. It's never done. I mean, it's, it's woven together at the same time. And, you know, the, Nitin That's is part cool. of the conversation. Nitin brings sketches of, of music in. Mm -hmm. and, sh and Akram comes to his studio and he, and he kind of plays with different sounds, okay. and, and Akram says, that's so fascinating, I, I like that, let's mm -hmm. stick with that. And then Nitin will come to the studio and, and, and watch some of the movement and says, that's really an interesting direction, I think. And, and so it's, 
So it's bouncing backwards yeah. and forwards all the way till you get That's to wonderful. the end. And it's nice to be able to do, to have the time and the opportunity yeah, to do that. That's it's an expensive wonderful. and yeah, process. But it creates wonderful yeah, sure. work. And it's the way it really should be done. <laughs> I think so. I think, you know, the problem with dance, and I think it comes down to the resources. It's really, you know, I've seen that many times, is that, you know, people get such a short span of time because it's one of the art forms that cannot benefit from modern technology. That's right. You know, a dancer can't get up in the middle of the night and say, yes, I've got an idea, and create it in his room. They, you know, they need studios and they need bodies and they need right. warm space and, and, and they need to pay for people to be there. Yeah. And it's a real-time art form. You have to create it in real time and therefore it's, it suffers from that in a sense. And, it really does. And yeah. as the producer, I, I've, I've fought hard over the years to find a process mm -hmm. that we can develop our work methodically, right. slowly, patiently and reflect upon the changes that happen to us right. and to the work as we're doing it. Yeah, that's right. So that usually takes about 18 months. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Akram's choreography, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's the women's work is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so is that easy for you to come to? I'm an actually a powerful person anyway. Okay. I have this fast twitch um, okay. from doing the athletic, the 100 meters. So it's very, very, very quick. So the powerful side, although I, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's, easy but it's more natural in my body uh, my body starts to relate to it and right. can understand it right um whereas when I started to work with Akram he mentioned that I need to explore the feminine ah. way of moving which okay. is the softer more delicate right. um way of moving and for his dancers he likes to play with the feminine and masculine yes. so you can be asexual and you can have the both the soft the quick, the sharp, right. the gentle qualities, all the, um, yeah, which all the dancers have. The boys, they can be just as soft as we are. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't achieved it yet, but it's something that we're still trying to explore. I actually read your essay on the business of dance, and I found it fascinating. And I found it extremely helpful to myself, um, just really scanning it quickly. But it, it's, it's quite in-depth, and I like the way your brain works on laying out what needs mm. to happen and, and all the... The concepts you you mentioned two particular concepts organizational priorities yeah. and stakeholders would you like to describe what that is well and i think how that works i think one of the things i've noticed again and you know that business of dance is not a formula it's not you know basically i wrote it in a way to, to kind of talk to people about what we've done our experience okay. and and what i like people to walk away from that essay is to think that you have to think about things differently if you want to change yourself mm -hmm. and you have to know who you are and what your priorities are Right. And so at the very beginning, when you're a young company and you're trying to start out, right. you actually don't know what you, who you are, to tell you the truth. Who, you know, when we live, we don't know who we are for ages. Right. And so what you, will, you, what you do is you eliminate the things you don't want to mm -hmm. find out who you are, in right. a sense. So this thing about organizational priorities, we sat down, our Akram and I, with our chair about 2003, okay. and we wrote down like the 30 things that can, can happen to us as a dance company. Mm -hmm. And we just said, and we eliminate all the stuff we didn't want to do. And okay. we were left with these three things like company work, artist to artist collaborations, right. and solo katak, which is the classical art form that right. Indian art form that Akram still performs. And so that became the organizational priority, and, and in a way, which is, the, and the organizational priority served the artistic principles mm -hmm. and not the other way around. Yeah. Which you know, which happens quite a lot. Yes, it does. So that's what I kind of try to engineer and explain through that, that notion. And then stakeholders, well, everyone has an investment in you, yeah. you know. You know, like the audience, the, the people who give you money, your, you, know, your, you know, your collaborators. Right. And you invest in people. Right. And, and, um, and you invest because you believe in them and you, take, and you trust. Because trust involves risk. Yes. You know, trust is not a, a cert, dead cert, you know. That's right. And you're taking risks with people and you're trusting them and, and you're creating something with people and you're investing in them. And so the notion of stakeholder for me is more than just someone who's put – you know, in that kind of, it's not a one-way relationship. Right, right. You know, when I first met Akram, you know, back in uh, 2000, and um, it, it was, um, I just finished dancing, you know, I just retired from dancing, and I met him, and he, he we sat down, I said, so what's your dream? Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? So he sat down there, and he was kind of working out the kind of way he would like to create his first piece, mm -hmm. and he said, I want original music, I want 10 weeks of rehearsals, I want research time. And I was like, my inbuilt calculator is figuring this all out. Right. And it came to about $100,000. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and, and <laughs> okay. that's a lot of money in the it beginning. It is a lot of money. Um, and so what I did is that I said to Akram, okay, it's a dream. I sell my apartment and I'll pay for it. Okay. This is what I did. 
That's and huge. so this kind of idea, yes, That's yes, huge trust. It's yes. trust and it's investment and it's a vision there and a faith in someone. And I, and I think that's probably in the arts, we're not used to that, you know, but people do it in every day in their lives. You know, people will save up their life savings and put it into their dreams and make, try to make them happen. And, and, and from that process, we developed a simple little contract with each other, okay. which has three clauses in the contracts. The first clause is, Akram must always start each project with a dream. Okay. Second one is, I must always take risks to make that dream happen. Okay. And the third part of the, the, the contract says that we are both committed to excellence, innovation and quality and to make ourselves better. Yes. And that's our contract. How did you find Akram? How did you come upon him well, and his work? I was working as a trainee uh, dance manager in a small organization, and they said to me, you know, you're not going to be here forever. Or you have a small salary. You're going to have to develop your own artist portfolio. Um, and so if I were you, I'd get out there and look, but that's not a problem because I'm always out there looking anyway. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, in the arts, whether you work in dance, you, it's, you have an obligation to feed yourself. And, I, and I, not just through dance, but through visual arts, exhibitions, books, poems, anything mm -hmm. that can stimulate your imagination and, right. and thinking. That's right. And it's, it's kind of necessary. And I always Very encourage necessary. every person to do that instead of wearing those blinders yeah and if you get caught up in the cage of your own art form you yeah. won't go very far it's true. you know and so I, I i was scouring the theater and someone said there's this young boy performing with this very established british choreographer jonathan burrows mm -hmm. and i saw him on stage and i was completely i mean he just spoke a language i'd never seen before mm -hmm. i was totally mesmerized by him i mean i would almost say i fell in love yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm not with Akram, but with, with him with, as a dancer, absolutely. the language he spoke. And, and we spoke together, we spoke afterwards, and there was a really interesting chemistry. And, mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then I said to him, you know what, I'd like to work with you, because not because I feel I can take you somewhere, but because you can take me somewhere. Nice. So, that's and that's nice. how we got together, really, and that was like uh, 13 years ago. Do you think you understand his vocabulary? Because you yourself were a dancer, a brilliant dancer at one point. I think that's what I've read, that you were well into the dance world and, and then you made the transition. I was an okay dance. <laughs> no, seriously, honestly, I started late and it was, I was okay. I had a good career yeah, and I'm very yeah. lucky to have had that. And I, I think I'm a better producer than a dancer, to be That's honest. Fine. That's and I, fine. I, I'll be, I'll happily take credit for that. But um, yeah, you know, when, there's no loss in translation stuff. Right. Now, if you speak the same stuff, right. but it wasn't just that we spoke the language of dance. We spoke the language of like this wacky, uh, un kind of unquenching sense of imaginative thinking. Right. You know, when we first started working together, we were constantly ringing each other up all mm -hmm. the time about some film we'd seen and the way they lit it and the use yes. of music or, or a book or a poem or, or even a poster that was designed on the subway. Right. And we were bombarding each other all the time with kind of creative thinking right. and ideas. Yeah. So I think that more than the dance was something that we shared. Okay. And I could go further, I could say that we're both Asian kids brought up in Britain and, you know, so we both understand that kind of interface between two cultures. Right. And what you do when you have two cultures, you either say it's us and them, or you do, if you're really smart, and I think, I hope you think we have done that, is that you create the third space. Okay. And the third space is where you go, where you're not the enemy and they're not the other, right. which you can join up and you can create something new. Right. I think that's actually hugely necessary now. I mean, everything is for lack of a better word, but like in the dance world, there's so much hybrid going on and you, mm. you, you, you bring from the classics and you bring from, from what you have as yeah. well as culturally. And then, yeah, I think that it's a wonderful experience to continue to be able to really grow and develop from that. I have a, a quote that you mentioned in your, um, your essay. I want to read it to I you. Know, I was, it's, <laughs> no, it's good. It's, um, it's actually Jay Lehrer's quote. Mm -hmm. Obstacles increase the possibilities of perception and expand our conceptual scope. I think that's a brilliant quote. I'm so glad you found that. Yeah, in your article. and I'm still reading that book now, and I find it I, absolutely because the thing is, you don't have endless resources. Mm -hmm. but, so I think what you try to do, with as best as you possibly can, you create a parameter as wide as you can, a boundary, let's say, as wide as you possibly can be. Okay. So there is a defined place that you're in, but okay. within that space, you're free. Right. So that's right. Yeah, and so the thing is, and not to see, and too much that's people right. focus on the boundary and forget actually within the boundary there's a space that is free. That can be huge amounts. Of that freedom. can be huge amounts of yes. freedom. No, I. Accept. And I think that's the, this idea of the obstacle is great because it, you know, if you if you didn't have that, you would just you'll be freewheeling and going all over the place and lost. Right. I try to talk about that when I teach, not to talk about me, but 
yeah, especially in specific things, that the parameter is our body. Sure. But there's huge amounts of freedom within our body. Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. And then also with the cultural aspect too. Sure. I mean, the boundaries are there. Yeah, I mean, you know, we live with boundaries our whole lives. Right? Yeah. You know, things up against us. But, you know, there's also that great Chinese thing from the, the, like, the I Chi or something. That there's only one constant in life and that's change. Yes. Yeah, that's and really you either true. embrace it and you're enthusiastic about it and you see that as an opportunity right. or you fear it right. and actually sadly most of the time people are fearing yeah. change and I think that's why artists are so necessary because they don't fear change they see change as an opportunity to do something to tell a story to reimagine the world to reinterpret things right. and, and, um, and, and though they may be fearful they, they, that doesn't stop them right. and, I, and I love that and I love that about anyone who's crazy and brave enough to kind of trust themselves and trust what's in front of them rather than look behind them and fear. So I'm excited for this weekend. And yeah, me too. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm scared and excited. I know, are you? Is it the first time you've met in a Los Angeles um, audience or you've been here? Now we've been here before, before. with uh, Sylvie Guillem and Akram oh, yes, in 2007, yes. and it was it was great. I mean, I felt a really wonderful reaction yeah. to the work, and you know, and um, and though I know this work extremely well, and we've toured it all around the world mm -hmm. now. I mean, we've gone to Palestine, to China, to Australia, yeah. to Brazil, to Colombia. I mean, it's been everywhere, Egypt, the lot, and um, everywhere still feels new because right. you know it's a new audience, it's a new experience. So the company is made up of many. Uh, dancers from different backgrounds and different cultures. What, um, tell me who's in the company this weekend. What kind of, what, the, what is their cultural background? Okay, so we got uh, Egyptian, we got Taiwanese, we got Korean, we got English, Slovak myself, and uh, Belgian. Belgian. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. And everyone brings different backgrounds in dance experience or expression and so how do they learn to be Akram's dancer? Like, is the choreography or rehearsal time, is that spent learning? Do you all have to learn Katak classical dance, and do you have to learn modern, his idea of modern, or what happens? I mean, like, if I just take like, a really general, like every member who joined the company, like uh, Akram introduced him to the Katak style. Okay. And the, and the history and the principles of the Katak. Okay. So everyone has a kind of the clue of like, what's going on. But what I really appreciate about Akram's like, uh, that he's a really open choreographer. So when mm -hmm. the pieces, when the pieces start to happening, or when we start to train for the piece, we really pro we, we produce a lot of movement on his idea. And after he just come, he take the movements, and right. after he just put his own writing into it. Okay. So he just modifies for. So it's a collaboration. Yeah, as well. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been touring this piece, Vertical mm. Road, for two years. Yeah. Do you tour most of the pieces simultaneously? Do you have many companies out there touring at the same time, or do you just really focus on the one company and? and work on this one piece as you travel? Well, we have a policy where we don't do stuff for other companies because, you okay. know, Akram doesn't feel that at this stage in his career he wants to do that. But we have several works at the same time. Okay. I mean, like Akram's performing tonight, actually, um, okay. a beautiful new solo called Desh, which is about his homeland of Bangladesh, and, and that's in London. Okay. Uh, two weeks ago, we were performing the Classical Katak program, which is the Indian classical dance in a two and a half week tour of India, while these guys were touring mm -hmm. um, vertical roads. Vertical so road. What I like about this piece is uh, that this, in this piece you cannot hide behind the movement. Yeah. Because this movement is uh, not that difficult or, or technically difficult as a previous uh, piece, uh, piece what, I, what I did with him. So it's really simple movement and in this movement you have to put like a lot of emotional engagement right. to make the movement look strong. Like if, you, like if somebody do 10 pirouettes and I do one, but it really right. so much engagement, it will be much more better than this 10 pirouette. So this is one I thing see. is beautiful, but also I hate because it takes so much, so much of the energy. You have right. to always produce. It's so an emotional energy. It's emotional. So therefore, like uh, if the piece, like if you don't put anything, it's down or uh, either it's very well right. or either it's not very good. At the moment, we're also choreographing for a film next year, which is called okay. Desert Dance, and it's about this Iranian guy who was forbidden to dance. And, and the director came to us and said, we'd like you to make all the dance sequences for the movie. Yeah. And, and so it's got Frida Pinto, the really beautiful Indian mm -hmm. actress, and oh, a couple of, couple of really nice actors yeah. in there. And we've, we've turned them from ugly ducklings into swans. It's fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I love actors so, because they... they well, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, because the thing is, they don't overcomplicate it. You know, mm -hmm. that's a role. Right. You know, in a way, and they've had two months to become a dancer. 
yeah. for a role. And they don't see I'm being a dancer, so I'm creating a role. That's and right. so they have a completely different relationship to the that's material. Right. That's right. And, I, and it's kind of interesting. It I simplifies like it. It does simplify it where we kind of get crazy. I was a hyperactive child. <laughs> um, okay. I did a lot of activities or after school clubs mm -hmm. um, just to keep busy, especially because I was born in North London. Right. So it was better for evening to always do something. Right. So I joined the athletic group and then on Thursdays I'll do hip hop and then... I only got introduced to contemporary later on. Okay. Um, that's when I realized that contemporary, I can get more money out of it. Oh, <laughs> it's financial. Like, okay, that's pretty cute. Contemporary might be cool. Um, <laughs> but it all kind of blends in together because I'm a powerful and dynamic dancer. So that comes from the athletic. Mm -hmm. um, from doing hip hop, the musicality comes into that. Sure. So I use the power into the dynamics, the musicality. Right. And then with African dancers, that's yeah. the spiritual side to dance sure. as well. So to have all the dynamics of power and the spiritual the side spirit. to dance, so it's not just movement. Yeah. Uh, for me, everything combines yeah. together. So does the company study the Katak classical mm. and then the floor, right, there's a lot of floor work, mm -hmm. a lot of floor movement invention. How does that happen? How does the company train? Well, you know, our company comes from all over the world and everyone brings their own training mm -hmm. with them, you know, and that's, something that we really like in the work, we like these hybrid bodies. Right. Now, what we were talking about earlier. And, um, and Akram does occasionally give them classical katak because if, okay. you may notice in a lot of our work, there's, there's very kind of fluid art, um, gestural articulation that comes mm -hmm. from Indian dance, right. which you don't often see in m many Western styles. Right. And, uh, um, and the use of rhythm, which comes from Indian classical katak and, and, and different rhythmic shifts and patterns. Um, but yeah, they train, they're really crazy, these guys. They can do yoga, then they can do um, <laughs> capoeira, or they uh, do ballet class. Brilliant. And, you know, they're just a real, real mix of people. That's or, cool. or, you know, and sometimes they did Chinese folk dancing once, and yeah. they just do everything. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I'm very excited to Me see too. the show tonight. And yeah. I'm, I'm thankful to get an opportunity to talk to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you. Me. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers.